today's class will be about open hips and open heart. So we're going to focus on hips, shoulders, chest, little back bend, and then at the end we'll have a kind of like goal challenge pose. So get ready for that. We're going to start with our Yob song. Maybe you want to make sure that the playlist is on repeat. Um, just in case we go a little bit. Oh, actually, no, we won't because I put an extra long playlist, so we're good. And just make sure it's on shuffle unless you want it on shuffle. And we're going to start the first song in three, two, and one. Cool. So we're going to start today at the wall. So fall next to the wall, get your wall. And if we're not going to stay there, so you don't have to like move all your stuff, move your mat if you're not near a wall. Just we're going to use the wall for the first like minute or two. So maybe just throw your computer up volume so you can hear me if you're going to a different room or something like that. So we're just going to start with the shoulders and the heart opener. We're going to bring our left hand to the wall, higher than our shoulder, reaching up. Take your right foot forward. Maybe the toe touches the wall, left foot back. And then go ahead, just lean in towards the wall. So we're opening up this left shoulder, opening up this pectoral muscle. Our music's super loud over here. I don't want you to hear it. All right, perfect. So we're leaning into that left shoulder. Right foot is forward. And just leaning, melting the heart towards the wall. You don't want too much of a back bend here. You want it to be kind of a straight back. Just leaning your chest forward. You might even rest the side of your head on your wall. The elbow can be touching the wall as well, just melting your chest forward. Breathing. You know, a lot of times I do like to start classes in some kind of more meditative pose, like child's pose on your back. And we will come on our backs in a moment. But really in yoga, the original purpose or, you know, the presumptive purpose of yoga was to warm up the body, loosen up the body so that you could sit for a longer period of time in meditation. So the meditation is supposed to come after the yoga, supposedly, but of course, yoga is a meditative practice. So just keep that in mind. Your mind doesn't always have to be super clear and perfect when you practice yoga. You might find that after you do all the poses, it's a little easier for you to feel more focused. Pull away, other side, right hand, reaches up, left toe to the wall, step back with the right, and just melt the chest forward towards the wall. You can walk the fingertips up a little higher. Maybe turn your head to look over your left shoulder and just rest the right side of your forehead on the wall. Breathe here. Couple more breaths. And slowly pull away. Both hands come up. I'm gonna just kind of look at this paint or this drawing here. These should be about, let's say, a foot and a half away from the wall. Depends on how tall you are and how long your torso is. So you have to kind of play around with how, you know, with your body and see what works for you. So I'm just gonna lean forward, my arms up on the wall and melt my chest in towards the wall. Maybe my chest starts to rest on the wall and I look up towards the ceiling. Maybe. It's definitely a deep back bend, especially right off the start. Nice and slow, press into the wall, pull back. And go ahead, lean against the wall on your back side. Walk the feet about a foot away from the wall and take a forward fold. Just a nice round spine. The lumbar spine should be nice and rounded. Shake the head no a couple of times. Nice. Slowly come up. And we're going to meet on the floor, laying on your back. So go ahead, come onto your mat, lay on your back, start closing your eyes.
Make sure everyone's muted. Perfect. So I love this stretch. It's a great stretch to do when you're trying to open up the chest. And I do this all the time in in-person classes. I haven't done it in a while just because it's a little boring, but it's really nice. We're going to bend the left knee, press into the left foot, lean to the right, and tuck the left forearm underneath the crease of the back, palm facing down. Roll back onto that left forearm and straighten out the left leg. So that left elbow is at a 90 degree angle. Your left forearm underneath the crease of your back, right where the back bend is palm facing the floor. Feel free to close your eyes here. Relax into this pose. It might feel super deep. If it does feel too deep for you and to the point where it feels painful, go ahead and bend that left knee again, foot to the floor, and press into the foot. Start to come out of it and lean to the right a little bit. Just so you get the stretch without the pain. Otherwise, you're here, laying and bleeding. Two more deep breaths. Nice and slow, roll to the right. Undo the arm, bring it in front of the chest, roll onto your back, hug that left arm in with the right. And other side, let's roll to the left. Right knee bends, tuck the right arm underneath. Palm to the floor, right forearm underneath the crease of the back. We come onto our backs, right palm on the floor once again. Relaxing into this pose. Again, feel free to press that right foot back into the floor, roll out of it a little bit if it's too strong. You close your eyes, starting that pranayama, that breath. Taking in the sound of the music, sound of your surroundings, sound of your breath, and sound of your heart. Go ahead, press the right foot into the floor. Peel the right shoulder off the floor, lean to the left, untuck the arm, roll back down. Right arm comes in front of the chest, hold it into the left. Nice, go ahead, bend the knees into the chest. Give them a nice squeeze, really hug them in. Extend that left leg down straight. Keep the right knee bent in. We've done this pose before if you've taken my class. Go ahead, bring that right knee over to the left side of the mat. I'm gonna take the little can and grab the top of that left thigh. Now that left leg's extended, but we start to bend the knee. And maybe we start to grab the foot behind us. I believe this is called cat's tail. And this is where you can bring your little pillow in. So I'm gonna use my block and just bring it underneath my head. Just because it's a little more comfortable this way, I find that the shoulder gets in the way of this pose being a really good stretch. So we're grabbing that back left foot with the right hand. We're gonna anchor that right knee down into the floor and we're gonna press the left foot away from your butt. So you're opening up the right shoulder as you grab the foot. Pressing the foot into the right hand, peeling that right shoulder open. Take another breath. Nice and slow. Hug the knees back into the chest. You can keep your pillow underneath you. Whether it's a real pillow or your block, doesn't matter. Extend the right leg down. Knee into chest, but comes over to the right side. So left knee to the right side. Your hand grabs the top of that left thigh. Left arm reaches back. Right knee starts to bend. You grab the right foot with the left hand. Now you can turn your head to look over to the right side. Press your left knee into the floor and press your right foot away from your butt, pulling that left shoulder open. <sighs> a 
going to three, two, and one, release. Keep that pillow, knees into chest, lying figure four, we're gonna cross, let's see. I will cross my left foot over my right first. You guys can see it better when I do my right side. So left foot crosses over the right thigh. You can interlace the hands on top of the right knee or under the right thigh. Hug it in, flex both feet. Breathe, relax. It's hard to you know, think about relaxing and using energy in different poses. So you can relax the breath and the mind and bring a really focused, pointed energy into certain parts of the body, focusing on that left hip, opening up, flexing the feet so they're energized. Slowly release the hands, but stay in this figure four. Let the left foot fall to the right side, directly to the right. Now we're gonna take our right hand and grab that left ankle. So we're reaching to the right side of the mat with the right hand. And then we can just let the left arm come down to the floor to the left side. So as you grip that left ankle with the right hand, I want you to actively peel that left hip open and down towards the floor. Now it won't move really at all, at least it's not for me. But you really wanna pretend like it's possible to lower that left butt cheek to the floor. As you try to do this, you're gonna to start to feel an opening in that left side and the left outer hip. Really trying to push that left hip down. Slowly come back up, switching sides. Opening up the right hip, right foot crosses over left thigh. Flexing the feet, interlacing the hands on top of the left knee or underneath the left thigh. Hugging that left knee as close to you as it feels comfortable. Breathing here, flexing feet, continue doing that. Take a few breaths to stay, just feeling that sensation of the opening with the right hip. You can always find a little bit of movement here, left and right. Nice, let the right foot fall down to the left side. So right foot to the left side, you're grabbing that left or that right ankle with the left hand, right arm to right side, and you're peeling that right hip down towards the floor even though it does not move. Pretend like it can move and you're about to lower that right butt cheek to the floor. Keep pressing it down. using dynamic movement of the body, even though you're not even moving that much at all. Keep doing this for two more breaths. Nice, and release. Take your pillow or your block, whichever, doesn't matter. We're gonna take it the wide way, the widest way possible, and bring it between, let's bring it between the knees, like so. And you probably know, abs is coming. And no, you don't really need to do abs for open hips and open hearts, but we love to do abs, don't we? So we're gonna do it anyways. We extend the legs down as far as you can, and then bend the knees and bring the head towards the block. Then exhale. Inhale, extend, lower the head, keep the shoulders open, and bend the knees. Keep elbows open as you do this. Inhale, come down. Exhale, bend. Let's try to use control. So do this at your own pace. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Keep going. Now I had someone message me on Instagram. We were doing a, like a few classes ago when we were doing abs. And she was like, I don't know how you didn't have back part. So if you are having that, and it's making a little bit of air come out of your lower back, totally normal. It's happening to me, you just can't hear it. <laughs> but you do wanna prevent that. There is a way to prevent it. It takes a lot of core strength, and it's not always easy to do at all. So if you're having a little bit of that, totally fine. 
And go ahead, let's take one more. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hold it and stay. Keep the elbows open. Stay here and pulse for 10, nine. Little pulses, eight, seven, six, five, barely moving, four, three, two, and one. Lower down. <sighs> Move the block to the side. Let's rock up to find Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Now you're probably used to Supta Baddha Konasana, which is supine Baddha Konasana bound angle. But we're not gonna lean back. We're gonna have our feet together, knees open. You can always rest your knees on whatever props you have, whatever height you want. I'm gonna have mine kind of hang down here. Bring your hands behind your back, fingertips pointing away from you and just kind of move side to side, left to right hip, and wiggle your hands a little bit closer to your low back so the heel of the hand get as close as possible, and your heart should be open, shoulders peeling back. Now it's okay if the toe side of the soles of your feet, the big toe side, I mean, aren't touching. Your feet are kind of open, so the feet are starting to open towards the sky. That's totally fine. We're trying to focus on the shoulders here and definitely allow this hip opener to close the eyes. Nice job. Slowly come out. Hands walk out to the sides for the way. And we're going to bring the knees together, swing the feet around, tabletop pose. Hands and knees. <sighs> Move the hips side to side. Let's take a couple cat cows. Inhale, let the belly look forward. Exhale, press and round the spine. Inhale, forward. Exhale, press. Inhale, stay in this back bend, looking forward, lifting the hips. Tuck those right toes underneath. Maybe bring that right knee closer to the center underneath you. We're gonna lift that left knee up, point the left toe. So try to bring your knee to hip height, looking forward. You might bring that left hand a little to the left side of your mat, just a few inches or even less. Bring that right hand back behind you, thumb pointing up towards the sky and grab the inner part of that left foot. Press the foot into the hand, open that shoulder, Maybe look slightly over to the right side. You might like to look back, or you can look down towards that left hand. Lifting up, pressing the foot into the hand. Take a breath. One more. And slow release, hand and knee. Whew. Hips move left and right. Nice job. And other side, left knee comes to the center. Tuck those left toes, lifting the heart, opening the heart to the front of your room. Lift that right knee, point the toe. Knee is about at hip height if you can. Press into the mat, right hand to move a little to the right for more stable base. Reach back with the left thumb pointing up. Grab the inner part of that right foot. Press the foot into the hand, open the shoulder. You can look back over to the left, or you can look down at your right hand. Nice job. Hold this, take two slow, steady breaths. Listen to the music, maybe do little head bangs here, Ooh, or you'll fall over, which might be fun. <laughs> and slow release. Ah, nice job. From here, walk both knees over to the left so knees touch. <clears throat> You're gonna take that left knee and bring it behind the right knee. Open the feet nice and wide, so the right foot comes to the left side, left foot comes to the right side. We're gonna come back and sit our bum between the heels for Gomukhasana. Adjust as needed, not everyone can do that as easily. I happen to do this all the time, so that's why it looks easier than it really is. We're gonna grab our strap. You can make it a little shorter, it doesn't have to be super long. I love this actually, it's a perfect strap from uh, 
either Spencer's or Newberry Comics back in the early 2000s. We're going to take that right arm lift overhead, grabbing the strap, left arm behind us and down, grab the strap and walk the fingertips toward each other as close as they can without pain. Take an inhale and stay. With an exhale, we're gonna fold down over that right thigh. You can flex the feet, you don't have to though. It might make you feel a little more stable if you do. Take two more deep breaths to stay. Slowly come up. Release that left hand slowly. Whew, maybe roll out that left shoulder. Strap moves to the side. Push yourself up, come back to your tabletop. And we switch sides. Both knees walk to the right side of the mat, knees touching. Swing that right knee behind the left, widen the feet. So they're in opposite directions. Sit down between the heels, go across on the other side. Taking the strap. In the left hand overhead, open up that left arm, reach behind and down with the right. And walk the fingers closer together. I've been really into like folk metal recently, but like kind of like folk black metal a little bit, which isn't totally black metal, but it's been really fun. You should check out this band that's playing right now and just go on Spotify under similar artists it's it's kind of like if the dropkick murphys were good and metal <laughs> in my opinion take a breath in and stay exhale lower down maybe you notice a difference in the side i definitely do i'm gonna come out of this in my right arm a little bit Take one more deep breath. Slowly lift. Slowly come out of it. With that right arm, it might be a little sore, sensitive. Roll out the right shoulder. Just getting a little more, more motion back in that right arm. Strap can move to the side. We do need this later for our peak pose. I told some of you what it is. Some of you came in late and missed it. It'll be a surprise. Push yourself back up for tabletop. I'm actually really pumped about this next thing. I'm going to do this a lot in classes from now on because it's just really fun. So we're in tabletop. We're going to tuck the toes and bring the knees further away from the hands. So in this kind of like awkward tabletop. And then we're going to drop the belly down, come into upward facing and roll the shoulders back. So we're working the triceps already because the elbows are bent. We're not locking the arms here because that closes the chest. You can see how my shoulders kind of caved in towards my chin. Whereas when I lower the elbows and hug them in, opens the chest. So from here, we're slowly just gonna lower the belly down, press into the hands, but don't come all the way down with the head. Press into the hands, back up for a cobra or upward facing. Inhale to stay. Exhale, lower the chest and belly. <sighs> Inhale, rise. So it looks and feels like a push up. Go ahead and continue this. <sighs> but really you're working those triceps and you're keeping the, the chest and heart open. <sighs> Let's take a few more. If you don't feel it in the back of your arms, keep pressing into the floor even more. <sighs> take two more. <sighs> and let's all push up, tabletop, tuck the toes, downward facing. My arms are on fire, oh my God. Lift the hips, pedal the heels. We all like a little movement in a downward dog. Find a bit of stillness. Bring the toes to touch. Lift that right leg up. And bring the knee forward, step the right foot through between the hands. Lower that left heel down. And from here, we're gonna take Skandasana. So I'll show you what that is. We're gonna sink down into that left heel, 
and flip the right toes up towards the sky. Kind of looks like a ninja pose or something like that. The left heel, my foot is lifted. Maybe you have a more open you know, foot where you can lower that left heel. I certainly don't, not necessary in this pose if you can't. Walk the hands, lift the hips, move over to the right foot with the hands, lifting the left toes. If you keep that right arm in front of the right thigh and knee, you're gonna have a hip opener on the right side as well. You should feel the groin, the inner groin, and the hamstrings. Inhale back to center, move to the left. Exhale, settle down. Let's take this a couple more times to each side. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Take your own pace if you'd like as well. These are all just suggestions. Let's take it one more time to the front. Let's turn, face forward, tuck the back left toes, step the right foot back for downward dog. I'm gonna be nice to your shoulders today, so I won't do too many chaturangas. Let's take that left foot, lift it up to the sky. Draw the knee forward between the hands, step the left foot between the hands. Skandasana on the other side. So you know what to do. Lock the hands to the right foot, lift the left toes. Maybe you like to take it a step further, touch the toes of the left hand. And make this your own. Flow from left to right as fast or slow as you want. I like to personally stay and just kind of sit in one pose. But I will move eventually to make it even on both sides. If you feel truly inspired in this pose, I'm sorry, I'm not facing you. But if you really want to, you can also bind the pose. I'm gonna switch sides on face you so you can see. So you're still in Skandasana. And if you're feeling really open and the shoulders are ready in the arms, maybe you're on the right foot or the left, doesn't matter which side. You're gonna take that arm that's near that thigh and wrap it behind you. Now see if you can turn and look over towards the other foot and maybe bring that other arm behind your back interlacing the hands. Maybe it works for you. Maybe you grab your strap and you try it out that way. Maybe one side is nicer to you than the other. Maybe you walk your hands and try it out on that side. Take one more breath, try it out. And then we're gonna meet in downward dog. So bring your hands to the front, step the foot back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. Press the hands into the, the mat. Sink the heels down. Let's take the left foot, step it forward between the hands. Stay here in your runner's lunge. But I am gonna have you heel toe that left foot to the top left corner and maybe hop the right foot a little more to the back right side of your mat. Take that left arm inside of that left leg. You can use your blocks underneath your hands here. Keep that back right leg nice and strong and slowly just shift forward and back, keeping that right knee off the floor. Then you move along to the music. Thank you to whoever um, suggested Amon Amarth. I love them. They're really awesome to do yoga too, as well. Let's take this a step further and lower the right knee down to the floor. And let's open up for a deep quad stretch because we are gonna need to open up the front of the hip anyways to do the pose. The pose that's secret until we do it. Take a few breaths, maybe reach back, open that left arm. Totally let that left knee open up to the left side. And release. Step the left foot back. Let's come into plank first. Let's stay on plank for a moment. Why not? Take a little pause, get a little core action here. And lift up downward dog. 
Let's do the other side right away. Step the right foot forward. Heel to the right foot a little to the right. Right arm inside of the leg. Pop the left foot boop, a little more to the left side. Shift forward and back. Keep that left leg nice and strong. My kitty has not wanted to hang out with me recently when I do yoga. No, he does. All right, so we're lowering that left knee down to the floor. Reach back with the right, deep quad stretch. If you can grab the foot, go for it. If not, we're just reaching back. You're still getting a full stretch. If you don't grab the foot, it just adds a little deeper aspect to it when you do. Maybe start to bend the left elbow too, getting a little more tricep action. One more deep breath. And slow release. Step the right foot back, come into plank pose. Staying here for five, four, three, two, and lift the hips, downward dog. <sighs> Pedal out the heels. Let's do that again, a little more flowing. Take the right foot forward. From here, we're gonna lower that right, uh, left back heel down, but we're gonna point the toes towards the back of the room and then lower the heel so our feet are open. We're coming into goddess pose. For now, you can rest your hands on your thighs, thumbs pointing in, and sink down deeper. You can start to shift your weight side to side into each foot, so kind of shifting your weight forward and back, front of the room, back of the room. Feel free to make this more metal. Bring the arms up, bring fists. Do your horns, because why not? You already have the music playing. Maybe you start to swing a little side to side. Get a little more movement into it with the arms. Play around with it. Let's find a little stillness. Hands on your thighs. Now I'm gonna kind of pretend like we're in a huddle because you know we all play football in the, our free time. We're gonna dip that left shoulder down and look over to the right. Switching, looking to the, uh, in front of us and dipping the right shoulder down, looking to the left. Let's do it again, left shoulder dips, look right. And right shoulder dips, look left. Nice twist. So let's get deeper and bring our hands off the thighs. Maybe make your fists again. We're gonna pulse for 12 counts. One little pulse is two, three, four, five, press into the heels, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. open the chest, 11, 12. And that's it, 12, yeah, nice job. Bring the hands down, tuck the back left toes, step the right foot back, Downward dog, right into the other side. I'm gonna do the same side because I don't want y'all to have to look at my butt the whole time. So the other foot steps forward, lower that back heel, lift up into goddess pose. Although it doesn't really matter, I'm doing the same side because we're doing the same thing on both sides, shifting a little side to side. Try to get even lower this side though. Do whatever you want with your arms. I always like to make it a little bit dancey. Makes me feel a little more expressive about my yoga. I used to take dance, so I kind of miss it. Makes me feel like you know, I'm connecting with that as well, connecting more with the music. Let's get even lower. Stay here with me, you got this. Maybe you're like, fuck you, Tina. I hate this pose, it hurts. Well, I don't want you to feel pain, but it should feel like a deep stretch. So yeah, definitely I see, I think someone flipped me off, thank you. I miss road rage, so I have it here if you want to. Yoga rage. Let's do a little quick pulses front and back, side to side. Hands on the thighs, 
on the knees lightly, just little pulses left and right. For three, two, and one, let's come up. Point the toes in, lift the arms up, hands to heart center, we forward fold. <sighs> Feels nice after that. Move the hips gently side to side and the forward fold. Little tiny movements. Lock the hands over to the right foot. And we're gonna step the right foot back, plank pose. Let's take a puppy pose and take a little break, shall we? So puppy pose is similar to child's pose, but we're gonna open the heart as we do it. So if you have your blocks, grab those. If you have your pillows, whatever you have as your props today. So to do puppy pose, our hips stay lifted. So in child's pose, you sink back, right? In puppy pose, your hips stay lifted. So with our blocks or our props, we bring the elbows down. I'm bringing my elbows to the top of my blocks here. Hands can come to heart center. I'm gonna walk my knees further back just a couple inches and slowly let my face melt down between my shoulders. Point, uh, my fingertips can point up towards the sky. This is also named Anahatasana. Anahata is the name of the heart chakra. So it's called heart melting pose. Take three deep breaths. Nice and slow, come up. That perfect. Okay, so let's do a little more flow, just a short flow, and then we're going to come into the goal pose. And I will tell you what the goal pose is it's pigeon, but it's ekapada kapotasana. Well, that's not king pigeon though, so it's one leg king pigeon pose. So basically, we're going to be doing pigeon at the end, and then we're going to use our strap to open up the shoulders, grab the foot, and you'll totally see you're going to do it. It's going to be killer. So let's come into our downward dog just for a breath. Let's step the right foot forward. Let's lower that left heel down and lift up into warrior one. You can grab your strap here if you'd like. If you need it to open up your shoulders more. Arms can come down and reach back with the strap or interlacing the hands. You don't need it. Peeling the chest open with an inhale and coming into humble warrior, chest down to right thigh. Looking back at those back left toes. Slowly come up and we're gonna open up into warrior two, staying with your hands interlaced behind your back. So if you release, hands come back, interlace or with strap. And then we just shift our chest to face the left side of our room. Warrior two with our hands behind our backs. Feel the chest open. And we're gonna do kind of like a warrior two, humble warrior version. So lower the right shoulder down to the right knee. This is an opportunity for you to take a bind the other way and like a side angle kind of way. If you wanna lower that right arm in front of the right thigh. Otherwise you're getting a huge shoulder opener anyways without it. Press into the right foot and rise. Let's do the other side, hands come down. Step the right foot back, plank pose, downward dog. Right into the other side, left foot steps forward, right heel down, reach up, warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Hands can come down behind your back, strap or interlace. Let's switch the interlace though, if you have that. So we're not doing the same side both times. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, chest to left thigh. <sighs> Drop the head, look down and back at the right face. Appeal, open and up. Don't release the hands. Warrior two, but still interlace behind you or with the strap. 
Make sure your left toes are pointed forward. Inhale, open the chest again, reach back. And this time, lower the left shoulder down to the left knee. You can look and feel a little bit weird. It's not a pose you'll do all the time. But I do love the challenge of this pose. Feel free to let go of the bind. Maybe that left arm comes in front and you find a different bind. Let's come back up. And come high to low. Hands come down, step back, downward dog. Look forward. Let's hop our feet on either side of our hands in our squat pose. Come down your squat. Feel free to take a seat on a block. I love doing that. Even if you don't really, quote, need it for the stretch, it is nice to kind of catch your breath, allow all of that open hip stuff to settle in. Nice. Let's release Malasana. So we're going to come into pigeon. So find your pigeon whichever way you like. You don't have to come into downward dog, lift the leg, draw the knee in, swing the foot. I mean, that's one way to do it in a very dancey way, which is great. It's adding to your flow. But you know what? If you like to come into pigeon just like this, nothing wrong with that. Let's start with whatever. Let's start with the right leg forward first, just so we, when we do the challenge pose, just switch around if you do it, do on the other side or just remember you're on the opposite side. With your prop, you can use your block, of course. Tuck in underneath your groin, so it's on top of that right outer, or right inner shin, before the right heel, and it's kind of like a ramp for your belly and groin. And you're lowering down just like that. Feel free to tuck the back left toes. So our strap, Ooh. grabbing that. I wonder how it's gonna work with this, we'll see. So if you don't do the full pose today, it doesn't mean you failed. It means you're on a different journey. And it sounds super cheesy, don't I? Different journey. But you know, everyone's body is different. So just don't get too down on yourself and feel like, God damn, I couldn't even do that pose. And this is a really challenging pose. So please don't put too much pressure on yourself to do it exactly as we're doing today. So if you've gotten this far, this is pretty amazing. Pigeon is a really hard pose to do. It's actually one of my least favorite poses to do. Um, so good for you there. We're gonna take our strap and we're gonna kind of go fishing for our back left foot. And this is the most awkward part of the pose, to be honest with you. You will have to kind of come out of it a little bit. Let's bend the knee, back left knee. Maybe I'll do it today. Oh, look, put that strap around. I have it easy because I have this good loop. Either way, you want to loop it around the back left foot. So if you have another block, feel free to take your right hand on the block so you have a little bit of height in that right hand. Otherwise, come onto your fingertips. And the strap is in your left hand. Let's bring that arm nice and, ooh, nice and high, okay? So this can be where you end today. I'm already in a back bend. I'm already doing the pose. Why go further? I feel good, I feel comfy, right? You might decide to kind of pull in the foot, see if that feels good. Drawing that heel in towards the glute, towards the glutes. Maybe you attempt both hands come up and maybe you're like, God damn, that hurts. I'm not doing that. Good on you for knowing your body and not putting yourself in pain. If you do make it this far, both hands on the strap, maybe the hands walk closer to the foot. Whew. The whole time I'm pressing my foot away to keep on the strap here. Take a breath wherever you are. <sighs> nice and slow, let's come out. Nice and slow, Ooh, release, unfish the foot. And instead of coming to that flow like we always normally do, I'm not a huge fan of that flow, honestly. Let's take the block out from underneath and let's sit down on that right glute, oh, on the right side. Go ahead, just bring that left knee forward. Just take a little break. Whew, think about what you've done. I'm sure it looks amazing on your end. 
All right, let's try the other side, shall we? Now you kind of know what we're looking for. Maybe you continue this flow at home. You know, if you do try this pose <clears throat> more at home, I do recommend that you do a really good warm up with the hips because nothing ever good came out of someone just throwing their body into a really deep pose. It can really, you know, cause injury. And um, that's really the ego coming in the way of your practice. So just remember that. Block comes in underneath the groin, acts as that little, um, that little ramp underneath your belly and groin, right on top of that inner left shin. And again, this can be where you end. Everyone's body, everyone's practice is different. Maybe you do take it to the next level, bending the right knee, fishing for your foot with the strap. All right, nice. Nice job. Straps in the right foot, straps in the right hand, lift the right arm up and overhead. Left hand can be down on the fingertips or blocked. This is where you decide how deep you want to take it. Maybe you decide I'm going to try that left hand up. Ooh. Push the foot away. Maybe you start to walk the hands back towards the foot, opening the heart, opening the lower back. Maybe you look up. And then your friend comes in and snaps a picture for Instagram. And slow release, guys, nice. Sit on that left hip and draw that right foot forward. Take the knees into the chest, round the spine, gripping the shins, just draw the chin in towards your chest. Nice. And it's about time to come down. So strap is aside. We're getting ready for Shavasana. So good job today. You did all the poses or some of them, or you did exactly what your body needed. So that's good. Come on to your backs. <sighs> so we open the hips. No need to do any more of that. Let's just hug the knees back into our chest once again. Rock a little side to side. And just for a final pose, let's take a supported bridge. So grab your prop, feet to the floor, press up, hips lift, block or prop or pillow, whatever slides underneath your sacrum, your lower back, lower down, find a nice relaxing pose here. Arms can come down. If you wanna continue that openness of the chest, you can slowly walk your shoulder blades closer together. If you feel some kind of back bend here, try moving that prop around until you don't feel a back bend. Close the eyes. Start to sip in everything that happened, let it settle. And press into the feet, remove the block, go to the prop. Coming all the way down for Shavasana. <sighs> Taking whatever pose feels good for you today. You can take, you can take legs up the wall pose. <clears throat> Actually, if you're interested in doing legs up the wall, I'll show you a really easy way to get into that. Otherwise, you're in your Shavasana of choice. So when I want to come up legs of the wall, I'm going to approach the wall very awkwardly, honestly, kind of inching my hips close to the wall. I come onto one side and I kind of just press my butt against the wall. I lay onto my side and then I just turn on my back and lift my legs. So if you're wondering how to get into that pose easy, this can be where you're at. Okay. 
everyone take a deep breath in. And exhale through the mouth. And more like that, inhale. Exhale, nice and audible. <sighs> One more, breathe in. Exhale. Stay in your Shavasana, breathing, natural breath. Eyes are closed, jaws relaxed. Eyelids are just shut. Maybe they even flutter a little bit. You feel a genuine connection with the floor of the earth. Feel like there's no separating boundaries between your skin and the floor. You just start to melt into one being, one object, one unit. So you feel Almost like no difference at all between the music that flows out of your speakers into the floor, through the mat, through the skin. Imagining there are no boundaries. You're aware of your heart beating. Keeping this body you call your home moving. Keeping you thinking and eating and living. You feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the opportunity of life. Let's end class on our backs today. So feel free to stay on your backs. Feeling your heartbeat pulse throughout your body all the way to your toes. <clears throat> Your heart vibrating down into the floor. <clears throat> maybe tonight you start to think about breaking down boundaries and maybe really seeing the connection you have with others as it truly is. Feeling a deeper connection with yourself feeling a deeper connection with your neighbors, knowing that we have more in common than we do, that this is different. Place one hand over your heart, then one over your belly. Take a deep breath in, holding the breath. Exhale big through the mouth. <sighs> Just 
squeezing yourself a little tighter, giving yourself a hug, thanking yourself for coming today, doing this, making yourself feel a little more peaceful by connecting on a deeper level with your body. The light and dark in me loves and honors the light and dark in you. And together we say, Namaste. Thank you all so much for coming. I hope you're totally melted into the floor. Ah. <sighs>